Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 2nd. Right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We still got our cinnamon bun out here, our trough, the Gulf of Alaska vortex. And this is going to start to kick through as we go through the beginning of next week on in through the mid portion of next week. We have the chance for some precipitation, a frontal system potentially rolling through during the summertime. You've got to take it if you can get it. But on the other hand, we're going to have Mother Nature ooh, give us a heads up here and a reminder that we are not done with summer time yet because we are going to start to warm things up most likely as we go through the end of next week and in towards next week and we'll go over all those details in the video this morning so take a look at where we are as of yesterday you can see the marine layer and watch it burn back and then you get the thunderstorm development there across the oregon cascades northeast oregon some of the washington cascades right across lake chelan as well where we have some extreme drought that's been introduced here so that is not a good look as far as fire starts are concerned you can see that lightning go on through the day yesterday hundreds of strikes across the region we go through the overnight hours and those thunderstorms gradually come to an end there and then we go out back towards this morning and you can see the marine layer has re-intruded back in towards portland seattle a lot of the puget sound is engulfed as well as well as a lot of the smoke from the bear gulch fire it is on the olympic peninsula and it is really hanging over some of the puget sound this morning i'll show you where that's going to go on the day today now, lightning strike density here over the last 24 hours, you, you can see that lines up with what you just saw, right? So yeah, I had a quite a bit of lightning activity there yesterday. Now, this is the drought monitor for Washington. Look at that extreme drought. It does include Snoqualmie, Stevens Pass, Lake Chelan, a lot of areas out there. And we have severe drought that encompasses much of the state also, all the way back across the Puget Sound region, all the way down towards Portland, some of the northwest Washington coast. And you can see we got some extreme across southeast Washington as well. So not a good look here. Hopefully we can bring this system in as we go through the midweek period and it drops meaningful rainfall across the area. Now, if we take a look at day one isolated dry, this should not be a shock with what we've been going through the last few days. Isolated dry thunderstorm potential is there and on day two, similar areas. Uh, as far as thunderstorm potential does clip northeast Washington portions of eastern Oregon today, tomorrow, it backs off on that a little bit here, but then we go day three and it reintroduces for some eastern Washington. Also, you see the marginal risk for some stronger storms potentially across southwest Montana back in towards the Rocky Mountains of Idaho. So here is that Bear Gulch fire. If you saw last night, did you see that orange moon out there take a peek out there uh, if you get a chance here over the next few days and you'll see some very hazy orange skies producing a lot of smoke out there and right now this is really over the top of the Kitsap Peninsula and a lot of the Seattle metro going to look where that's going to go here in a moment but yeah bear gulch fire is burning it's pretty much out of control they're not really able to fight it it's close to 4,000 acres three percent contained it was human caused and this thing is probably going to burn all the way on in through the fall and even the winter months where the fall rains and the winter snows might have to extinguish this fire and here we are this morning with that action there again it's the bear gulch fire and you can see that smoke across the puget sound region and if i put this into motion you see it starts to drift off to the east pretty quickly as we go through the day today there's one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock seattle starts to clear out from that smoke at least according to the high resolution rapid refresh runs as of this morning it starts to kick that off across some of the cascades eastern washington up across northwest washington here as well and you can see it flare up as we go through the day again today and of course tomorrow it's going to kind of do a similar thing but yeah we do clear out a bit here across some of the puget sound for tomorrow you see uh willamette valley in western oregon doing pretty nicely so far let's hope no fires are brewing and start to get ramped up here because we're getting so much lightning activity across the region that i really worry about those fire starts now taking a look at the european model 500 millibar heights again there is our cinnamon roll here across the gulf of alaska this trough is going to start kicking through and hopefully it brings a frontal system with us with it for us as we go on into the midweek period here you see the trough hanging out all the way on into thursday morning but you see mother nature says hey we're not done with summer yet look at this ridge starting to build out over the pacific ocean that's going to start to move back towards the pacific northwest more on that here in a moment but first things first let's take a look at that frontal system european on the left versus gfs on the right so <clears throat> we're going to put this into motion. We're going to see the thunderstorm activity today and tomorrow. Then we go on into Monday, more thunderstorm activity there. But then we start to see the low pressure system off our coastline. And you can see it starts to bring some of that precipitation in here. European is a little bit quicker here as we go through the day on Tuesday. 
So the GFS, a little bit slower with that precipitation, but man, oh man, could we really use this precipitation here as we go through Tuesday and Wednesday. The GFS finally brings some of that better rainfall as we go through the day on Wednesday and Wednesday night. So uh, I'm crossing my fingers for that one. We could really use it across a lot of the region. Although it might not be enough to really make too much of a difference, it would definitely be better than not getting any precipitation at, at all, of course. If we take a look at the North American model, I wanted to look at this one to kind of get a third opinion. And you can see that low pressure system out here as we go through the day Monday. So as we go through Tuesday, it starts to approach the coastline. How much precipitation will it have in store for us? I'm a little bit nervous just because I've seen these systems, especially in the summer months, early August, these can fall apart quite rapidly. So we'll be watching this one over the next few days. Total precipitation in inches. Let's scroll through this, the six day period, and you'll notice this swath of precipitation right there. As we go through the day Tuesday, look at the European starts to introduce that across the region. And you can see some areas in the blue, you're getting up over half an inch. Some of the Olympic Peninsula getting up over a half, maybe towards an inch of precipitation towards the coastal areas some of the north cascade so cross your fingers for this one if you want to see some summertime precipitation west of the mountains it doesn't show much at all for the willamette valley maybe just a hair there a little bit of precipitation for some of portland but anyway we'll be watching it over the next few days things can still change now european on the left gfs on the right Good old global forecast system, the U the USA model. Both models have this trough, and there is the one swinging through here as we go through Tuesday, Wednesday, and then that system clears through as we go on into the day Thursday. And you see both models start to build that ridge in its wake. So we're starting to get some confidence in the warm up as we go through the end of next week. And now, as we go off into the future a little bit more, look at the nasty ridge that the artificial intelligence wants to throw right off our coastline there you can see some ridging on the gfs a little bit of a different ridge axis here so a lot to work out there but it does show this warm up here on both models to some extent gfs flattens that ridge out a bit more here as we go through the 9 10 day forecast but look the G artificial intelligence just wants to hang on to this just huge ridge off our coastline so again lots to watch here through the extended forecast as well now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence ensemble mean versus the GFS, this is why we don't want to start screaming about any heat waves or anything just yet, because you can see the ridge develops there and it would warm us up pretty dramatically as we go through next weekend. But how long will that last? Still some question in that you see the ridge flatten out a bit. Of course, it's ensemble members, so it's going to smooth things out <clears throat> quite a bit. But yeah, above average heights still show up in the 10 day period. Now, National Blend of Models, what are we looking at here for today, Saturday, August 2nd? Here we go, Seattle, 79, maybe 80 once you get away from the water across southwest BC, some mid 80s for the Willamette Valley. We go through Sunday, we cool things down a little bit there, and we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, in the wake of that system, the trough will still be with us, suppressing temperatures across much of the region. You see not many areas on Wednesday showing up above 90 degrees, maybe Boise and Medford touch a 90, but Seattle in the mid 70s, Southwest BC as well, coastal areas, nice and cool. And if we go to the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you see that heat start to return there, that gradual warming trend as we go towards next week and National Planet models are starting to show it, starting to get really warm in Seattle and very warm across the Willamette Valley. But again, lots to work out in those extended runs. If we look at the European, you can see Seattle, once we get towards next week and we start to ramp up those temperatures on yesterday afternoon's model run here. So that's what we're watching for right now. But we get to deal with this trough. In the meantime, the Mossbacks are gonna like this as we go through uh, the end of the weekend on into the early mid portion of next week here's portland something similar and the european really wants to ramp those temperatures up again towards next weekend now this is the extended run here the european weeklies this goes out 46 days all the way to mid-september this is portland international airport you can see the warmth here potentially showing its face as we go through about what august 22nd or so and then you can kind of see how it becomes much more difficult to get the really warm temperatures though it still can be done as you go through late august and on to september you can kind of see the gradual decline in these temperatures as we make our slow steady track or a slow steady path all the way into the fall period here across pacific northwest so just you can kind of see the gradual trend in the cool down but yes we can still get very warm during the month of august here across pacific northwest and even through portions of september as well 
Now, this is the 46-day precipitation anomaly. I just wanted to show you this because you can kind of see how across the entire region showing up below normal as of right now. And just a reminder out there, the sun is still strong. This is Seattle here, um, the UV index. You can see high, you're looking at orange, very high is red. If you look at Spokane, something similar there as well. And even on the cloudy days, you're still getting a pretty good UV dose if you're out there. So, you know, wear your big bucket hats and whatnot, and your sunscreen and your sunglasses. Here's Portland. You can see very high over the next few days as well. And then we go to Southwest Oregon Regional Airport near the coast. And again, even on the coast areas where it is cool, you're still getting a lot of UV index out there. And this is Quileute, Washington coast, you know, it's 68 degrees there, but you're still getting a pretty good dose of sunshine and Whistler up into British Columbia as well. Just kind of driving home that point there that the sun is very strong at this time of year. So <clears throat> this was issued yesterday, and this is no doubt going to be changing up here because that ridge is really starting to show up on the model. So I expect this to change for tomorrow and throwing that out right now, that six to 10 day, because we have, our precipitation chances are before this period here. Um, yeah, and if you want to check out the Patreon page, go ahead and do so. Uh, it's free to sign up here, or you can throw some of your hard-earned money my way if you would like. Help support the channel. Um, otherwise, yep, I'll be out there at Seafair again today. Not sure where I'll set up. Probably Seward Park again. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.